Today we're going to evaluate the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the negative 1 half 1 plus 1 over n power times 1 to the 1 times 2 to the 2 times all the way to n to the n and that's raised to the 1 over n squared power. Try it on your own and be honest with me, let me know if you're able to solve it. Um, this one's pretty tricky, but it only takes techniques that you learn in calculus and a little bit of calc too. Okay, so you can just watch me solve it. So the first thing we'll do is let's, uh, let's call this limit L and we'll take the natural log of both sides. So log of L is equal to uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of the log uh, of this whole thing here. So I'll just put it in parentheses for here because uh, I don't want to write it again. Okay, and so we're going to solve for log of L and then we'll raise e uh, to the power at the end. And I'll do all the work on this board because this board's a little bit cleaner. Okay, so using log rules, we could break apart this product as the sum of logs. So each time we have a limit as n goes to infinity. And I'll bring the power in front as well. So negative 1 half, 1 plus 1 over n, log of n, plus well, we have a bunch of products, all with a 1 over n squared in front of it. And remember, a product, the log of a product is just the sum of the logs. So k equals 1 to n of log k to the k. And I'm not sure why I did a capital L here. <laughs> all right, so far, nothing too crazy. Again, this is the limit as n goes to infinity. Let's clean this up a bit. This is negative n plus 1 over 2n log of n plus, OK, we have log of k to the k. We could bring the k's out in front. Uh, and I'll actually bring this into the sum. So the sum from k equals 1 to n of k over n squared log k. All right, now we're going to do a little bit of a trick. Let's multiply this fraction, numerator and denominator, by n. And the reason why we're going to do this, so we'll have a negative 1 over n squared. And this will become n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay, and that should look familiar. That comes in a sum identity. And here we have log of n plus, and we're not going to touch this at this point. Okay, so n times n plus 1 over 2, that's the sum of the first n integers. Okay, so this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 half n squared, or sorry, negative 1 over n squared, the sum from k equals 1 to n of k log n plus the sum from k equals 1 to n of k over n squared log k. And so whenever you have a limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to n, you should be thinking this could be written as an integral. So let's write this as an integral. It's going to take us a couple of steps to get there, though. Right, we're going to need that delta x term. 1 over n could be delta x. So let's have a limit as n goes to infinity. Let's factor out a delta uh, a 1 over n. So what are we going to have? We're going to have the sum from k equals 1 to n of negative k over n log n plus the sum from k equals 1 to n of k over n log k. All of this times 1 over n. 
Okay, now let's combine this using log rules again, you know, some rules and log rules. So it's the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to n. This negative will put the n in the denominator. Both of these have a k over n. log k over n times 1 over n. And this here is an integral, right? This is now the integral from 0 to 1 of x log x dx. OK, so we need to evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of x log x dx. This would be a good time to pause the video and try it on your own, see if you know how to evaluate this integral. But I'll do it up here. OK, so we want to evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of x log x dx. And this requires integration by parts. OK, so we'll let u equal log x du is 1 over x dv is x, or x dx, I guess. And this is x squared over 2. OK, so this integral is equal to uh, uv minus the integral of v du. So that's x over 2 dx. And this is all going to be evaluated at 0 and 1. And so this is equal to x squared over 2 log x minus x squared over 4 evaluated at 0 and 1. OK, and so we could you know, bring this over here. That is, well, when we plug in 1, what do we get? 1 squared over 2, which is 1 half, times log of 1. This term goes to 0, minus, we plug in 1, we get 1 fourth. OK, and when we plug in 0, we get ooh, 0 log of 0. That's going to require a limit. So let's do the limit as x goes to 0 of x squared over 2 log x. We still need to figure that out. And then when we plug in 0 here, we get 0 minus 0. OK, we're almost done. If we could evaluate this limit, then we're done, right? Because then we know what the integral's value is, and then we know what this limit's value is up here. OK, so let's evaluate the limit as x goes to 0 of x squared over 2 log x. Well, this is in an indeterminate form, right? It'd be 0 times negative infinity if we just plugged in 0. So let's rewrite this as the limit as x goes to 0 of log x over 2, x to the negative 2. Right? Those are the same. And then we could use L'Hopital's rule. So this is equal to, by L'Hopital's rule, the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x over negative 4, x to the negative 3. OK, and so we would bring a 3 up into the numerator. It would cancel out with one of these with this x. And when we plug in 0, we get 0. OK, and so what do we get? We get that the natural log or the log of this limit is equal to just negative 1 fourth. And so the limit, the limit that we started with this limit here is equal to e to the negative 1 fourth. So that's 1 over the fourth root of e. Pretty tricky. But no one step was hard. It was just there's a lot of steps. So let me know if you solved it. Be honest with me, all right? I'm sure some of you got it. You guys are smart. 
All right, see you later.